Good afternoon, everybody. Woo! We're back. Woo! Or morning. My leg kind of hurts for Or that, evening. But I don't care. Welcome back to The Hop. Gabe and Steven are here. What's we have up? Just a monster of an episode today. It's finally happening, ladies and gentlemen. It only took 29 episodes, but we are here. We are ready. And we're doing it. We're going to Two Roads Brewing in Stratford, Connecticut, and I cannot wait any longer. Hallelujah, amen, and all that good stuff because... Hey, Gabriel. Hey, steve Real. Ew. Let's grab a drink. You know, I feel like we've been hyping this episode since the day we dropped the podcast. This, Yeah, this has to be good. <laughs> In a different time and place. We, we did not do well for ourselves being like, we're doing two roads, we're going to knock it out. We're, this, or maybe we did. Or maybe I, we did. We're, we're putting ourselves up to a certain kind of standard for I feel this like episode. I want to say up front, out the gate, for everyone's benefit, that this is a two-part experience. Yes. We're going to be drinking two roads this week. We're going to be drinking Area 2 next week, which is a whole other thing that we'll get into later. Uh, but we're going to visit the brewery. We're going to do a flight. We're going to give you everything you need to know about Two Roads Brewing over the next two mm. weeks. And if you have any questions at the end of that, you didn't pay attention. You did not pay Go Go back and re-listen. Um, yes, we are starting off with a flight of some of their select brews. And as for our later brew, that's going to be the complete opposite. And I'm just going to say it now. I'm a little nervous. Yeah. But, but, but we're going to do it and we're here for it. Um, and as always, let's just. Let's just leap off the cliff. Let's, Let's just okay. do it. Wow. All right. Do we have parachutes? Is we, this an Alex free solo we're, situation? We're free or we just, solo, baby. We're just free climbing the mountain. We're, Everyone around us is concerned, yeah. but we don't care. We're free soloing the news and notes. Diving right in. America is running out of cans. Oh, my God. Ew. Yeah, it's not It's not great with what's going on. We, they are. America is running on Duncan, but we're running out. Of cans. Uh, in an interview with Brewbound, David Racino, CEO of Austin's American Canning, said 16 ounce cans are going to be a problem this summer. There is just such a strain on the supply chain right now. Everyone wants them, everyone needs them. Uh, he also points out that the sor- shortage will disproportionately affect craft breweries because their go to is normally the 16 ounce cans that they use every single day. But the nation's largest can manufacturer, the Ball Corporation, notes that certain SKUs are experimenting a surge in demand, especially the slim 12-ounce cans, due to the popularity of hard seltzer. Oh, my God. Ew. Louder for the people in back. That's that's two right there. That's two ewes. So, you know, we're you got, st- an, you got a gross story right here. I got a gross story here, but it's it happens uh, to meet demand. Company is supplementing their domestic supply with their global manufacturing network. And they're planning to open two new factories in the next 18 months, which is awesome because uh, we really need it. Uh, there's been quote. Uh, he's been quoted saying these additions will add at least six billion units to balls overall capacity by the end of 2021 um really awesome to see you know the larger beer manufacturers they need all of these cans for all of their dazzles and delights if you will yeah and i think part of the problem here is that ball corporation has some of their bigger biggest contracts of course and some of their priority is being given to the anheuser bushes of the world the miller cores of the world that have these huge contracts right crap that's why this uh guy down in austin david racino is saying Craft breweries are the ones who are really in trouble here because because they're the smaller of yeah. the they're the David and the Goliath over here. So yes. they're yeah they're they're running out quickly. Um, 
But Racino has been able to work with a manufacturing partner in Guadalajara. American Canning is sold out of the 32-ounce Crowlers until its next shipment in early August. This company has been offering customers 25.4-ounce Crowlers in the meantime, which are the same diameter and can be seamed on traditional seamers with an attachment to accommodate the shorter height. So we need more cans, America. Keep recycling. The 24 5.4 ounce crowlers are the same diameter, but they are not the same size. Not true. That means less beer. It, I'm it, not a fan. Who wants that? Nobody wants that. So recycle and think. hold on to those crowlers. They might I, be I a know. commodity. Yeah, they might uh, be a, a, a. Ignore me. In other news, um, the uh, something else uh, to do with. Uh, Lady Rona. Um, the Colorado Brewers Guild has had to cancel their 24th annual Colorado Brewers Rendezvous. Rendezvous. Um, <laughs> the event had originally been postponed from July when it's normally held to October due to Senor 19. However, the organizers found that they could not provide the same world class experience that the Colorado Brewers Rendezvous is known for. We have fun. <laughs> Sometimes I do it for me. <laughs> and I don't care who's listening. Yeah, right. Uh, lovers of the event are encouraged to stop by the local chamber office if you find yourself in Salido, Colorado. Salida, Colorado? Salida. Salida. Salida, Colorado. To purchase this year's limited edition poster as well as other merchandise, uh, the spokeswoman for the event also encouraged them to check out the local beer offerings in Salida. Because you can't check them out at the festival. The festival, the festival normally has like over seventy five breweries and over three hundred, you know, tap pours and just you know beers to 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 offer. And so, uh, for the first time in twenty four years, they're not able to have it. But um, they hope to come back in a big way for their twenty fifth anniversary next year. So you can stop by the local chamber office in Salida to purchase the limited edition poster. Uh, the poster was designed by local artist Jared Jacob of Sunday Lounge, local artist in Colorado. And uh, the festival artwork this year features a majestic elk against bright, bold colors and a Colorado mountain range. That's so Colorado. So who doesn't want that poster in your apartment? I, I mean, I'll take one if you're just handing them out. Hey, is this a poster of a moose? No, that's an elk, dude. I'll take it. Where'd you get that? A festival I didn't go to? A beer festival that was... Cancel <laughs> <laughs> The posters are available, at, like I said, at the Chamber office. I'm not going to give you the address because most of you aren't in <laughs> Salida, Colorado. Um, but uh, T-shirts, which cost $35 plus tax, uh, will be available for purchase online at the Chamber of Commerce's website. 100% of the proceeds from the sale of posters and T-shirts will go back to the Salida Chamber of Commerce. So just think, you go online, you buy yourself a $35 t-shirt, and you're contributing to this 25th anniversary extravaganda of a rendezvous we're going to have next year. I mean, I'd love to participate to that, but $35 for a shirt. I mean, it, I better look good, damn good in it's, that shirt. It's a shirt for a rendezvous. Okay, fine. I'll buy it. <laughs> Fair Isle Brewing, one of Seattle's newest breweries, moves online. Oh, I see what you did there. Founders Jeffrey Barker and Andrew Pogu. 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 <laughs> Crab apple. Pogu opened the doors at the end of January. They unfortunately had to close them on March 15th, the Isles of March. That's some trippy shit. They immediately pivoted to an online model for local sales when the quarantine hit, making them one of the first breweries to do so. They got on the online game quickly, and it paid off. Mm -hmm. uh, so now they're partnered with an online retailer, Tavor, to give craft beer fans across the country access to all of their beers. And this is really cool if you're a fan of wild ales. They are specifically known for these types of brews, and uh, many have been waiting to try a Fair Isle brew ever since the brewery first released a beer in collaboration with the famed Wild and Sour Ale specialists at Austin, Texas, Jester King more than two years ago. Now, of course, creating wild ales, you know, t does take time. Um, just creating the house yeast culture took months, and they've traveled all across western Washington collecting wild yeasts from orchards, gardens, things like that. The result is a unique blend of microorganisms that lend Fair Isle Brewers 
and beers a wholly original flavor. Wholly original. Wholly. Uh, their beers are out and they're a hit with the Wild Ale Lovers in Seattle. And like we said, they are available nationwide on Tavor. Check it out. Do it. All right. This is a... Uh... This might be a new segment for us. We don't have a drop for it. Honestly, it probably should be. This week in disgusting drinks. Uh, (laughs) All right. First up, uh, I'm just going to blow through these real quickly, but um, Monster Energy Drinks, you know it, the one that gave you energy when you were were a sophomore in high school, and and then you regretted the following year. Yep. That Monster Energy Drink is reportedly looking at entering the hard seltzer game, uh, this comes this is speculation from a financial analyst from Stifle, and he's saying that uh, Monster is uh, he planning the move. Um, they think my Monster is likely to seek distribution via a large beer network with a product rollout in 2021. Sigh. Uh, in June, Monster filed for trademarks for four names, including True North, Real North, Pure North, and North Star. Uh, so those are the four trademarks they they filed for. These are re- these are apparently related to goods and services. Quote: Seltzer water, water beverages, flavored waters, beer, brewed sugar based beer, and quote hard seltzer, flavored brewed malt beverage, alcoholic beverages, except beer. So what, what does North have to do with anything? I don't know. It's just what they decided to go. Listen, I'm That's not weird. A, so okay, Monsters making a seltzer. Gross. Yeah. Uh, In other news, Dogfish Head is also joining the craft seltzer fray. Uh, A number of craft brewers have attempted to gain ground in the seltzer department, of course, including Harpoon's Arctic Summer, Deep Ellum's Blind Lemon, Oscar Blues's Wild Basin, Wachusett Brewing's Naughty... Naughty? Naughty? Nah. Sure. Naughty. Naughty. Let's call it naughty. Night Shifts, Hoot and Braxton's Vibe, nice. as well as offerings from No Lee Brewhouse, Coop, Ale Works, a whole bunch of other ones, including Two Roads. Um, Dogfish True. Head has announced on social media that they are making Hoppy Medium, a real fruit hard seltzer made with real guava paired with complimentary aromatic citrus hops. Citra hops. This tropical sipper is as juicy as it is refreshing a fruity fizzer that's sure to satiate. We'll see, dogfish head. Yeah, let's let's see how that plays out. Uh, six percent ABV, one hundred and thirty calories. There are currently no plans to distribute this outside of Delaware, so we won't be having it anytime soon. What I find interesting about this guy is that Dogfish Head is now owned by Boston Beer Company, and Boston Beer Company is one of the largest uh, hard seltzer distributors in America through Truly. So, so it kind of makes sense. It's kind of confusing because it's like Dogfish Head, like Boston Beer Company, is competing with itself. Yeah, but like, you know, when you're when you're playing when you're playing a game and you just keep winning, at a certain point you gotta just play yourself. I guess. Um Right. And I gotta say, compared to this last one, and we are meant to be inclusive and we're here to welcome everyone to the podcast, but I would drink Monster Hard Seltzer sixty times over before I guzzled down what I'm about to talk about, but PBR is launching hard tea in 26 states. Ew. Paps Blue Ribbon, their hard tea is... This is from a press, press release. I'm not saying this, but it's deliciously effervescent with a natural peach flavor. It's uniquely Pastian. Pastidian? Pastidian. 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 Evolution of the hard seltzer market and a perfect alternative to artificial and oversweetened products. PBR's hard tea is brewed using real tea leaves, has only 3 grams of sugar, and at just 4% ABV and 100 calories, is set to become your go-to drink this summer. No, it's not. No, it's definitely not. And you guys couldn't see it earlier, but I was shaking my head through pretty much all of that. <laughs> I just want that on record. It's uh, th- it's it adds to a list of experimental drinks that PBR has put out, including hard coffee, what? stronger seltzer, and whiskey. With quote more innovation forthcoming. Come on, PBR, please. PBR, pa- pack it in. But what are you doing? I do want to recognize for our listeners that this is available in 26 states, and that list includes our favorite state, the great state of Montana. Congrats, guys. You finally did something, and it wasn't even that good. And it sucks. (laughs) 
They're like, finally, we're on the board. What did we get? We got PBRT. RT. Oh. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, Is it good? We don't know, but it's only at 4% ABV. So I, my... I told you, I had Twisted Tea once, and that is the most disgusting thing to me that I ever had uh, in my mouth in an alcohol. That was like the groupie just... high school drink. It yeah. was like, yeah, we're cool. No, That was not. disgusting. Thelonious, welcome back. We've it's got a very special a toast. Yes. Uh, this toast comes to us. Uh, it's a poem by Robert Frost or Bobby Frost. Bobby That's Bobby F as we're calling him. Bobby Frost. Um, this this poem is all about kind of the uh, slogan, if you will, of Two Roads, which is the road less traveled. Yep. And uh, this poem is called "The Road Not Taken." Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet, knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. And from that comes the name of our next brewery, Ladies and gentlemen, Two Roads. All righty. Boom. We are kicking things off with a flight. Ladies, take flight. We're taking flight. Uh, we got a IPA flight here. Um, two roads, some of two roads uh, staple beers that have been around since uh, basically the inception of the company. And um, so we're about to drink a bunch of IPAs. If quick. you've ever gotten the variety pack that comes in like what looks to be a bus. You know exactly yeah. what we're doing. Um, so we're just going to knock through them all. We're going to lift list them all as we go. And let's start off with number one, the Lil Heaven Session IPA. Now, this is one of their year-round selections uh, coming in at 4.8% ABV. On the SRM chart, we're looking at a very goldenish color, uh, very clear, very see-through um, I would say maybe like an 11 to a 14 sort of deal. Yeah, maybe even a little lighter than that. Yeah. I guess it depends on the chart you're looking at. To me, I would say that's more like uh, more like a 5 to a 6. Oh. It's pretty... Oh. Mm, yeah. I must have been looking at maybe, another chart. Maybe up to 8, but... Uh, Beer Advocate gave it an 87. Untapped gave it a 3.67. And Beer Connoisseur, our... Our wild card <laughs> gave it a ninety three. Our white whale, if you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we like to if we if we can find the review for them, we always like to add it in. Um. Uh. Yeah. So head lacing. Um. I just have a ring around the glass. A uh, little bit of lacing against the glass, not sticking too too much. Um. On the nose. The nose gives you uh, a lot of tropical citrus. You get a lot of Indeed. cantaloupe, a lot of mango, definitely. Mm. Um. Orange peel. Um, just, uh, a, a lot of like light florality and citrus, not a whole lot of hops. Uh, a little caramel, bit of caramel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some pineapple maybe. Yeah. Grapefruit maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that whole category of just, yeah, you know, it's, it's hard to just pick one because some beers you're like orange or lemon 100%, but this is kind of like all of them. So uh, it's a, a nice little tropical citrusy mix of, <laughs> if you of will. sweet fruit. All right. Well, it's not doing any good just well, sitting in the glass. We got a lot of beer to drink. Let's do it. On the Hmm. Yeah, this one is um, 
Like it's a session IPA, like you said, it's four point eight percent ABV, and the first thing that comes to mind is not a flavor, but crushable. It's just like you know, correct, 100%. very simple sipper. I don't think that the uh, taste really does what the aroma does for you in terms of the sweet fruity citrusness. It's more like a like biscuit. You know, it's more peppery. malt forward when mm-hmm. it's tasting. Yeah, I, I would agree. It's not you're you're gonna smell one thing and taste another. I am getting a little more of the bitterness than I thought I would. I don't have a problem with it. It's not bad. It it doesn't leave a bad taste. I just kind of something you want. It, yeah, it was just a little surprising. Like yeah. I was like, oh, there's like some some full bitterness, if you will, like towards the back of the throat once it goes down. It's very dry. It's not hazy at all. It's definitely clear and clean, cleanly fermented. Um, easy to drink. Of, so easy to drink. Super easy to drink. Yeah. Um, this is made with Azaka, Mosaic, and Equinox hops. Uh, and it's uh, it's good. It's it's good as far as session IPAs go, and it's good as far as kicking the flight off. Yeah, I, this this is not only a great summertime cookout beer to have, but it's mm-hmm. also like if you're going to do a flight, you want to start off low and kind of work your way up. And that's kind of – we're trying to best do that uh, today. Um, so that's what we got. Um, this beer was specifically named for a secret room in the century-old factory building turned brewery where workers once snuck away for quote-unquote breaks. Bounce. Wow, wow. Mm. <laughs> Hence, yeah. hence the little heaven if name. You, if, if you, you take will. a tour of their brewery, they point it out to you. It's like this little loft, and it's like in the tucked <laughs> in the back room. This is where we go to feel good. <laughs> Damn! All right. And they named a beer for it. Hey, I'm for it. Um, yeah, it's good. It's uh, it's 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 fine. It's not great. It's fine. It's a session IPA. It, yeah, I, I'm not. I'm just kidding. We're dipping our toes in the water. It works. It definitely yeah. works. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's okay. It does its job and it starts the party off. All right, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have uh, the Rotating Hop Series, which is their uh, shop. Uh, and it's basically a hop series that changes every month. Yo, hit me with that can, yo. Uh, so this guy is a pale ale. Uh, it is 5.5%, the one we have. Uh, on the SRM chart, I'd say it's uh, a little bit darker than the one we had before, but not yeah. that much. It's like a um, like a seven, maybe an eight. Um, now, like I said, this uh, the hop series changes every month. So what they do is they have uh, basically a recipe. And they just swap out the hops yes. uh, every month, and then you can only get it in the beer bus variety pack, and then you can check the labeling on the beer bus variety pack to see which hops are in yours. We are drinking Mosaic and Simcoe hops right now, uh, which is cool. They do have some with uh, much more experimental hops than that, I would say. I think the one that they have out right now is Trident and Lotus. So this one's maybe last month's. Um, So that's cool. I don't know what Trident and Lotus hops taste like. We've never had those. But uh, this one is Mosaic and Simcoe, Simcoe, which is hops we're a little bit more used to. Um, the look is straw color, yellow to gold, kind of sunshine color. It's clear. You know, the color of beer. You know, beer color. Uh, it's, it's not hazy at all. However, on the nose, you definitely get, um, that citrusy kind of mixed with earthy thing that I would expect from like a juicy New England. I'm getting more earthy than I am fruity. It, mm-hmm. I feel like the the aromas were kind of mashed together, but the more I smell it, the more I'm getting that earthy crispness almost rather. Like it, the fruitiness is there. It's just I feel like it's in the background. Yeah, for me, I think that the fruitiness was like the first thing. Like the first thing you get is like tangerine, like a bitter citrus, um, like orange peel. And then pretty quickly the like uh, hops kind of take over, but it's not a piney biting hop. No. It's more grassy, earthy, straw, you know. It's, it's not a bite. It's more of a nibble, if it's, you will. It's a hickey. If you, <laughs> it's a little... It's there we go. Just the soft earthiness. Um, see, the flavor's really nice, though. I think it's, it's really, really well balanced. It's very well balanced, and it's very smooth. Mm-hmm. Like, it's very smooth going down, which I, I don't think know it's, if I wasn't ready for. Or. It's... um. 
it's kind of what I was hoping the last one was in a way. It's like <laughs> yeah. it's well balanced. Like it's got uh, the hops that you want from a pale ale, uh, but it has just in you know just a little bit of bite, like we were saying. But the caramel malt is still there. The malt background stands up to it. It's got a sweetness to it. It's right. light. It's easy drinking. It's it, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't skimp on what it is. Right. It's it's got. It's still got flavor. Whereas yeah. I feel like the uh, Little Heaven is a little bit too watery for me. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so sessiony that it does what it's seeking to do, but it's just a little bit too flavorless for me. You want a shotgun Little Heaven later? You know, we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll talk about it. We'll pray on it. We'll ask the Lord. We'll see. We'll see what way the Spirit moves us, and then we'll <laughs> go from there. This is good. It's I, I I like it in terms of like a, a nice sort of step up from the last one, and in terms of an easy drinker. Uh, like we said, it's uh, it's refreshing. It's light bodied. It's crisp. It's uh, and if you get this shop beer yourself, this shop pale ale yourself, you may not have our hops, and you may nope. be drinking something different. So, but the hops definitely are showcased. I think like yeah, I know what mosaic hops taste like. I know what Simcoe hops taste like, and they taste like this. Yeah, like those things are front and center in this beer for sure. Right. So. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Um, I'm with it. It works. Next. It does its job. <laughs> Next, moving right along, we've got the Honey Spot IPA, another year rounder. Uh, this one, we we first of all, let me just say, we did this flight exceptionally well because all of the percentages are starting to climb. We, we're on the up and up. We know this this ain't our first rodeo. We, this, ain't, this ain't our first we know what we're doing. Our first get together. <laughs> um this ABV coming in at six percent uh IBUs of about 55. On the SRM chart, we're looking more at a straw yellow, little bit hazier, not as see-through. A little hazy, yeah. Um, for sure. I would call like this about it's it's very yellow. It's like an like an eight-ish almost. It's so light, maybe like a four or a five. It's so I'm light. Look, I must be looking at a different SRM beer We got chart. different charts. I think so. Either that That's, or I'm colorblind and no one's ever told me. They're all over the place, but it, it's it's very... It's very yellow. Yeah, it doesn't look... It's not amber at all. Uh, nice head retention, um, you know, a centimeter thick, a uh, little bit of lacing along the sides of the glass. Beer Advocate gave it an 82. Untapped gave it a 3.62. Beer Connoisseur gave it an 87. Uh, the head looks frothy. It looks interesting. On the nose, grainy bread. See, to me, I get so much citrus and I guess grass. I don't know. It's like lime. It's hard with this one. It's not what you expect on an IPA. I'm not getting a lot of citrus, to be honest with you. I am getting some hops. And do we know what hops are in here? Yeah. Uh, Pacific Northwest hop character. Okay, well, that's... So, no, we don't. We do not. <laughs> but they're from the Pacific Northwest, which doesn't exactly narrow it down. But... <laughs> yeah, I mean, the reviews we read online, it was very, like... You know, citrusy, citrusy, but I, to be honest, I don't really get most of that. I'm getting the straw. I'm getting, the color is what I'm smelling. Like, I'm getting the straw, golden, um, earthy tone to it. I'm, I'm getting this, like, cere- cereal, like, bread sort of malt I, to smell. Me, I'm not, I'm getting citrus, and I'm getting lemongrass and lime, kind of a bitter citrusy thing, and then I am smelling the hops. Um, yeah, I'm definitely smelling the hops. But there's a softness to it. I do see what you're saying about the sweet cereal or the bread or something like that. It's yeah. like something you don't expect from, I don't know, what's like just a go-to IPA? Um, Six Point Bengali. Yeah. Um, something like that. Something that has a, a, a bitterness to the aroma. Right, and this this, this does not. No, this one is is sweeter than that. Shall we? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that sweetness comes through in the flavor even more so for me than it did on the nose. I get honey. Uh, mm. I get the citrus and the and the bitter are there. The hops are there, but it's it, again, it doesn't have a lot of a lot of bite. It's got a pale malt character that does come through. You get some tangerine. You get some 
tropicalness to it. Lemon peel, maybe. Yeah, but I definitely get honey. I definitely get... Uh, See, I'm getting the sweetness now in the taste, not so much in the smell, which mm-hmm. is interesting. Very light. Yeah, it's kind of like a soft IPA. It's like... Yeah, it's a quiet IPA. This it, is an IPA you drink when you're in a library studying for finals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is uh, this is definitely... This is, a, this is a library IPA. Let's coin that term. Sure. That's ours now. <laughs> Don't steal it. Trademark pending. It's a library IPA. It's a library IPA. When we open our brewery, we're going to we're gonna make a library IPA. And people are going to be like, why is it called that? Go re- listen to Round 29. Leave us alone. Uh, this Dad. beer is named, speaking of calling things things, uh, it's named for the uh, one of the, the road that's outside the brewery or the road that the brewery's on no like it's, off it's of? not yeah it's like it's like next to it adjacent to there's somehow uh route 75 ipa didn't seem to work <laughs> whatever they're on um so it's named for a road near the brewery uh honey spot road and uh this has won several gold medals at not s- too shabby. several different beer festivals the gibf great international beer festival okay uh it won the gold medal there in American Wheat, which is interesting. That is not an IPA category. Exactly. That's an American Wheat category. So this is more of like a crossover type drink. Two roads, the trickery. Why? The magicians <laughs> in that establishment. <laughs> uh, it's it, I, I got to be honest. Because you know I got to be honest on this I, show. Listen. Okay. Here's the thing. Before you say that, I wasn't gonna like call you out but i was gonna be like what do you think steve i gotta be honest this is not my favorite ipa i love two (gasps) roads no i love two roads but this ipa does not do it for me uh it is just too it doesn't have enough bite it's too Mm. soft and it's also not juicy it is sort of somewhere in the middle of those two things i think it's a very easy drinker like you said i think it's pretty light bodied i think it's got a light carbonation i think it's a sweet little beer so now let me ask you this there you're going into a cooler there's only two beers there's the honey spot and the little heaven what are you taking honey spot Mm. honey spot because i okay honey spot or the shop the shop i think i would tend towards it if all things being equal i guess i would tend towards higher abv uh but i like Mm -hmm. the flavor of the shop better true um but we have one more beer in this flight because the flight is four beers hey steven um i'm gonna let you introduce this fourth and final beer okay ladies and gentlemen he likes it for some reason i present to you in all its glory the road to ruin sexy double ipa Sexy is not in the title, but I added that. It should be. Uh, this is a year rounder as well. Uh, it's a double IPA. It's eight percent. IBUs seventy eight. SRM chart. We have probably around what I would call a eleven twelve. It's like uh, it's very amber, o- very orange amber. Mm-hmm. It's wooden colored, if you will. Nice and bubbly. Uh, it had a decent ring around the glass, which dissipated slowly as we drank the other beers. Beer Advocate has, netted eight, has it at an 88. Which um, is too low. Which is too low to me. Uh, but we haven't even drank it yet, so I guess we should do that before I before I love on it. <laughs> uh, it's And it's it's a little cloudy. I would not call it hazy. I would say it's no, just got cloud, a little bit cloudy, of cloud. Yeah, cloudy is the right word mm-hmm. for that. It's It's not really see-through. The nose is very complex. It just you're getting smells like bite. You're getting first of all, on the can it says plenty of bite. So you know what you're in for with this when you when you uh pick one up. And all over two roads, including the website, it says not for the timid. Mm-hmm. And that is one hundred percent true because we've both had this beer before. Um, you know, we haven't really div dove into the complexity of it as much as we are now but we know this beer like we this beer is strong yeah so I mean, like it's eight percent in the grand scheme of things it's not as strong as you might think it is but that combined with the bitterness i don't know something about this beer has the ability to knock me on my ass i yes. don't know why i don't know <laughs> yes. what it is yes 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 
Uh, on the nose, you get some sweetness, though. You do get some caramel. You definitely get some peach, some mango, a bunch of citrusy tropical things. And then mm. behind it, that bite is there. The pine is there. Uh, Raff. And then you take a sip. The, the logo of this beer, not the brewery, this beer is a snake just holding a hop in its tail looking at you like, what's up? So, I mean, you know what you're getting into. This guy, I just want to say, uh, oh, and it has... um. Four varieties of American hops in it. It's got Summit, Palisade, Cascade, and Magnum. I'm going to go out on a limb right now. He's going to go out on a limb. I think Cascade hops are one of my favorite hops. Oh, wow. I love Cascade hops. They're very piney. I think my favorite would probably be... Tetney! Tetney! We we weren't going to not say it, so... Uh, I love Cascade. I love Cashmere as well. That's not in here, but I do love that. But, um... Yeah, the bite that it gives the beer is just so... This is, like, a little... Not tough to drink after those other three, but this is, like, a... Oof, what mm. kind of night do you want to have? Like... Yeah, it's, um... It's out there. Heavy hitter. I, you know, I have had a lot of what I what I category, categorize as the mythic beers. The Pliny the Elders of the world, the heady toppers of the world, the sip of sunshines of the world, all of which, to a man, if I'm not mistaken, could be wrong about Planet of the Elder, are 8% double IPAs. Mm -hmm. West Coast style double IPAs, by Mm -hmm. the way, biting, piney double IPAs. They're all this. But this one stands up against all of those, and there's nobody waiting in lines and circles outside the brewery to get it. There's there's no reason for that. I mean, I understand that's a marketing thing, but... uh, this is one of those beers that when we see it on tap in New York, we go, <gasps> yeah, <laughs> easy, easy option. Yeah, it's like, what do we, oh, they got Road to Ruin, perfect. Um, I just want to say, outside of that, that if you take a tour of Two Roads, you know, when uh, when the air is clear, Ugh. um. They will basically do what we just did. They'll give you, they'll give you beer on the tour. They give you tour beers. And, uh. You will it's be pretty buzzed. much exactly what we did. You get like the little heaven. I think you get the honey spot at some point. Yeah. You end up with the road to ruin, and uh, we always walk away from that tour just hammered. I mean, not f- slurring our words, hammered, but, but I mean, damn close. But see, the reason why we always walk away from the tour slightly more drunk than everyone else is because by the time the tour has started, we've already had two or three beers. Y- that's true, but also <laughs> there, there's a certain kind of person that when they're on a tour. They'll be like, and they have more beer in the pitcher, and they're like, anybody want more? Other people will be like, no, I'm good. I don't have that in me. I'm like, there's beer in the in the thing. Pour. Put yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, we're it's like the last tour we went on. I think it was you, me, and our dads, and like a bunch of other random people. Yeah. And I think you, me, and I think both of our dads were like, yeah, we can have more because we can handle. Meanwhile, I'm always that annoying guy in the tour too, and I'm like, okay, so what exactly now with this tank? What? <laughs> Volume. I mean, are you guys are you guys <laughs> pumping that in there yourselves, or are you? Yeah. <laughs> well, we want to know. I'm that guy. Also, I've decided for time, I'm not going to do the 30 second rant, but I did want to mention it real quick. Um, I'm sorry, but big middle finger to all the beer advocate reviewers I saw that said that they not only did not like this beer, but they absolutely shit on it. Listen. If you shit on Road to Ruin, there's something wrong with you. This is well, an amazing beer, and I can understand if it's not your go-to. It's a very specific sort of drink, but just to just sit there and be like, I, I've read things, it's bland, it doesn't mean it. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, I... I, I Come on. I disagree with that. I can... I can absolutely understand this not being your thing, and I can understand 100%. you not even liking double IPAs. Yeah. But... If you do like double IPAs, to call this bland, the only thing I can think of is if you're somebody who, you know, juicy is the is the rage right now. It has been for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. A lot of people want those IPAs that are like cloudy, cloudy, cloudy and have a lot of luscious juice to them. This is not that. This is a West Coast biting IPA. So if you're looking for that, you're not going to get it on this beer. Yeah. And just, you know, <sighs> just you're wrong. Practice patience. I don't know what to tell you. It puts hair on your chest. Okay. Beer choices in order. I know your first one is yeah, going to be Road to Ruin, but let's... Obviously Road to Ruin. And, well, I feel like I feel like we already kind of did this because you just asked me. But yeah. For me, it's Road to Ruin, Shop, Honey Spot, Little Heaven. Go. 
<sighs> Road to Ruin, Honey. Sp I I'm gonna go in the exact opposite Deep order. Decreasing order. Yeah. So it's Road to Ruin, Honey Spot, Shop, Little Heaven. And you know, Two Roads has so much more oh. than IPAs. Yeah, so much more. And are you ready? Have you stretched? <sighs> Have you warmed up? I called my mom, so I'm good to go. <laughs> I'm nervous. I'm nervous, but um, and and you you'll you'll hear why in a minute. You'll hear why. You'll see. Let's do it. Oh boy. Okay. Uh oh. Gabe's nervous. Here we go. Gabe's nervous, but we're moving on to the root of all evil with hot peppers. It is their special edition seasonal black ale. Um, it is the spin off of their classic Root of All Evil black ale, but this time it's made with a fiery twist. It's made with chipotle and ghost peppers, ghost pepper being one of the world's hottest known chilies in this brew, and they also age this in piney roasty concoction in a rye whiskey barrel which has me somewhat excited, somewhat terrified. It's like a roller coaster. You just got to get on and ride it. It's very new. Uh, it's a 2020 special release. We got it at the brewery. Uh, and like Gabe said, the Root of All Evil is their black IPA. They took that over to uh, Area 2, their experimental oh, brewery. They, shit. they popped it into some rye whiskey barrels. Uh, they threw in some peppers. I just smelled it and I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I need you to man up right now. I'm ready. We're going to do it. I am not nervous, and here's why. I have had a few, not one, a few Show ghost off. pepper ales in my day. Oh. I've had, I can think of three. Uh, <laughs> and, and they range on a certain scale. I've had some that made my eyes water. Oh, I had see, one, that's what I don't want. I had one that I'll never forget. I think this was the last one that had actual ghost peppers. Maybe those were other hot peppers. I, the last one I had that actually had ghost peppers in it, I just felt it burn from my mouth down to my nope. stomach. Nope, 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 nope. Stop judging the beer before we even taste I'm it. I'm not, no, I'm judging that beer, not this, this beer. I don't know what is going to happen with this beer. I've read a lot of reviews of people saying like, you know, they didn't die from it. They were like, oh, it tastes like this and it tastes like that, which I'm like, okay, it's drink. I don't care what it tastes like as long as it's drinkable. I don't want to yeah. breathe fire like a dragon. It's a uh, 7.5% ABV, so it's a little bit uh, sturdy. Um, and it's uh, she's a big girl. It's 40 plus on the FR SRM chart. It's jet it's, yeah, black. Very, very it looks jet like black. the black IPA that it is. Um, Beer Advocate said nah, but Untapped said 3.52 because it was Untapped. Correct. Um, Just throw darts at any number between 3.4 and. 4.2. Pretty much. Um, this is very, very new. We didn't really find a lot of reviews and a lot of information on it, so we're kind of going into it blind. It okay. smells like... I smelled it, and I'm excited. Like, that's del that smells it's, like barrels. It smells like barrels, but it also does smell like heat. Like, it smells like sriracha almost. I smell... Yeah, I guess, I mean... Spicy. I guess like, I smell a little bit of, like... Fire. What I would detect as something that maybe I could get out of sriracha, but, like... Not sriracha specifically, but like you know what yeah, direction yeah. I'm going in. Yeah. But I get, I mean, what I get on the nose is like vanilla, rum. Definitely whiskey. vanilla. Definitely yeah. vanilla, yeah. Um, like you're smelling like a like a rich aid barrel-aged imperial stout, which right. we like barrels. Bang! Exclamation point! We, we just hadn't heard from him yet today. Hi, Mike. <laughs> um, what's really cool about this beer is it, it came with instructions. Um Step one, store the bottles in your fridge. Step two, when serving, make sure your bottle is well chilled and open it over a clean beer pitcher or other container that can capture the foam beer and drink it. I guess up until recently, they were having a little bit of trouble concerning the foam. I guess some people were saying like they poured the beer and it exploded or something and the foam went everywhere. Yeah, this seems to be an issue. With, but uh, it seems like they figured it out. This was an easy pour for us. I mean, we're, we're drinking it out of a can. And like we said, this is this is a, a really new beer for them. Uh, it was deliberately charged with a small amount of raw sugar and yeast to create an in-bottle fermentation, which I think was what was causing the problem yeah. maybe. But we're drinking it out of a can. We had no problems. Uh, Godspeed, my friend. Here we go. Whew. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, it's spicy already. Oh, yeah. Wow. You know what it tastes like? Hot sauce. Hot sauce. Remember those candies? It was a hard candy. It was called a fireball. Before yes. the fireball, the drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. candy is based off of. Yes. That's what I'm getting. Yeah, I get uh, cinnamon. I get... Cinnamon, nutmeg, a little bit. Nutmeg a little bit. I mean, the, the first thing that hits you is definitely the ghost pepper because it's just a spicy thing and it's like... <sighs> It is. It's like a hot sauce. It's like Tabasco sauce. It's not buffalo wing sauce. It's not sweet. It's uh. It's it's just spicy. Um, it's a uh, muy caliente. I would. Wow. Yeah. My back of my throat is uh. Yum. Yum. Delicious. It's. Um, it's. I. I don't. I don't know if I'm getting a lot of flavor yet, just because I haven't been able to really. But it's so it's got a zing, but. It's balanced enough that I don't feel what I was just talking about. The one time I had a ghost pepper beer at a brew festival and it shot through me like liquid fire. This <laughs> is a little bit more balanced than that. It's definitely right. spicy in your mouth. You're going to feel it. You're going to feel a zing. So mouth feel spicy. <laughs> Taste spicy. <laughs> but it's not undrinkable. Mm-mm. No, I think. And if you like spicy food, spicy if you're eating spicy food, I don't. Why not throw this in the mix oh and have a little God. acid reflux? I don't know about that, but it's yeah. I I mean it, it is very. It, it's interesting because I wouldn't take this for a dark ale, as it no. is. I mean it. It looks like a stout, which mm-hmm. is interesting. And then you drink it and you're like, oh, this would be another fun prank. Hey, you want a stout? Try this. And then they, they're like, what the hell is that? Well, you know what's interesting is it, it didn't start as a stout. It started as a black IPA. And as my mouth gets used to the heat, I am tasting hops in the background. I am tasting some pininess. I'm tasting some complexity. Um, definitely the barrel aging adds a lot to it as well. And rye is a spicy whiskey too. I mean, that's a mm. whiskey with some kick. Yeah. That's not bourbon sweet. That's, that's gonna, that's gonna, yeah, that's gonna fill your mouth with that stingy, like, whew. So we, we were excited to see this at the brewery and we were excited to bring it home because it's just wildly it different from anything she wrote. incredible. <clears throat> yeah, it's just, it's... <laughs> <clears throat> Ah. And the, the back of my throat is very hot. It's just it's. I've enjoyed uh, watching this process of getting like man. excited to buy it, then got it home, then spent the day researching it, got more and more nervous, didn't want to ever drink it. Now he drank it. It's not that I didn't it. want to drink it. It's just that I was nervous about it. And yeah, the back of my throat like hurts. I love it. Um, well, I'm a bitch, I guess. <laughs> But I, but I love it because it's different. I mean, I think one of the different. things I look for when I'm looking for beer is stuff that excites me that I don't see everywhere. And with the vast world of beer out there, it's very hard to find a beer that is just, you know, <laughs> something completely wildly different. I mean, I didn't love it when I had Ballast Point's Jalapeno Sculpin, which was also like this. Can't imagine. <laughs> but it was different, and so it was worth ordering. So... We were excited about this because, you know, we gave you what Two Roads has been doing since 2012 when they opened, and now we're showing you what they got going on today. And uh, Two Roads, I mean, as I just said, they they were founded in 2012. They're now one of the largest breweries in Connecticut and a staple for us. I can't – it blew my mind when I found that out. 2012, I feel like they've been around, like, my whole life, you know? Well – they haven't, but which is it like I, I just for how much they've expanded and how well they're doing. I figured like, oh, they must be they they started in like oh I know you know what and I mean? you know it feels like that because twenty twelve is around the time when we turned twenty one. I mean, I wasn't even twenty one in twenty twelve, so they have been around our whole drinking lives. True, that's and that maybe that's why. Yeah, yeah. Founded by four friends, Brad Hiddle, Phil Markowski, Clement Polani, and Peter During. Phil Markowski is still their head brewer. He is the man. He literally wrote a book on loggers. Yeah. He is the awesome yeah, They And they say that on the tour. He Powerhouse. literally wrote the book. Yeah. Uh, he, they foster, they, you know, as we said uh, with the toast, they, they named their brewery for Robert Frost's home, The Road Less Traveled. And they do foster a road less traveled philosophy at the brewery and the beers they make. Uh, and how they make them. 
Um, Two Roads was named one of the 10 best breweries in America by Paste Magazine. Now, <laughs> thank you. Um, this article was from 2018, but I mean, let's be real. They're, they're going to win one of 10 best breweries in America probably every year. Um, and they also won just so many awards, including gold for the Belgian Lambic Style Ale in 2016 at the GABF, Great American Beer Festival. Um, they're really incredible, and we love everything about them. They uh, have a brewery in uh, what was once a manufacturing building uh, in Stratford, Connecticut. Um, it's and you walk in there, and that's what you see. You see an old factory. It's you know wooden everywhere, uh, old wood. Very used old to stairs. manufacture like machinery, mm-hmm. and now it's a machinery turned machinery factory turned brewery, which is really incredible. Uh, and they now are. Uh, home to not only brewing their own beers. I mean, they're they're a massive operation yes. that has become an incredible business. Uh, in like we said, an early twentieth century uh, building. Two Roads was the first brewery I learned about that they brew other companies' beer. Like I had, I did never known that was a thing until Two Roads. I I think it was the tour we took, you yeah. know, years ago when they said that they were like, yeah, we brew other people's beer, and I was like, they what they contract brew for a lot of breweries now, um, such as Evil Twin Stillwater and uh, Lawson's Finest Liquids uses Two Roads to brew Sip of Sunshine, which led to the prevalence of Sip of Sunshine in Connecticut. You can get it pretty much every. However, you now. can't get it at Two Roads. You can only get Two Roads beer at Two Roads. That's true. Uh. So they are, I mean, we're going to, so next week, looking ahead, we're going to go to the brewery. Uh, we're going to have some beers. We're going to have some area two beers. Yeah, some area two beers in the taproom. So what happened was uh, they opened an experimental brewery in what I want to say was last year, 20, I think they opened it at the end of 2018. So the first summer you could go was 2019. Yes. So they basically just built a whole second building. It's like next to the building they had, the manufacturing building, which is already a huge brewing operation. They built a whole other operation next door. And you walk into this place. I mean, I went last summer, a year ago today, by the way. Wow. Uh, Happy (laughs) happy two roads anniversary. (laughs) Uh, And you walk in and you walk over this bridge uh, from the entrance to the tap room, and the bridge looks down on the brewing section of the brewery, and mm. you are walking over just stacks and stacks of barrels from all oh, over man. the world. Feeders, enormous feeders sent over from Scotland. Uh, tequila barrels, rum barrels, whiskey barrels, and they are aging beer of all shapes and sizes, making all kinds of sours, and they did it. Really, it's an experimental brewery that they built for Phil Markowski, their head brewer, to just dick around. For fun. Yeah. They were like, hey, you want an office to help yeah. create a bunch of shit? You want a playground? Here you go. That's essentially what they did. It's unbelievable. And it's right next door. And like you said, they have the pipes where they send the wort over. Yep. And they have, they're have they growing their own hops as well, which, um, again, we, we'll get into it next week. We got photos of, which was really dope. Yeah. And we'll get into it more next week. But, you know, most breweries around the country, you see a lot of people having their hops shipped in or uh, using lupulin powder or pellets or different things like that. Two Roads uses those those processes, but they also are growing their own hops, which gives them a lot more flexibility and the ability mm. to experiment in a whole lot of different ways uh, and to do a lot more wet hopping when the hop harvest season comes around. So that's really cool. They are involved in a number of different uh, relief programs for COVID-19, one of them being the Retailer Relief Draft Program. Um, it's an initiative. It's an initiative to help Connecticut restaurants recover from the effects of good old Roni Roan. Uh, the plan is to offer a substantial back-on-the-road discount on a selection of their fresh draft products. Um, and this program will be going from June 1st to July 31st. So, as always, really great to see that they are helping the cause and helping out uh, Connecticut restaurants who are currently struggling. And I just would like to say that as the heat subsides in this beer I'm drinking, more and more the flavors come through, more complexity of flavor comes through. I'm finding some hops, I'm finding some uh, oak, some pine, some vanilla, some different layers of things that I'm really enjoying, and my mouth keeps a tingling, which is a different experience for drinking a beer, uh, but I love heat, and I love spicy food, and I love 
Apparently, spicy drinks. Who knew? I um, love spicy food. I love hot sauce. I put it on almost everything. I am getting the flavors. I'm getting those profiles. Everything you mentioned, especially the vanilla. I didn't think I'd get it as much as I did, but I am. Going to be honest. Not my go-to. I don't dislike it. But if I was in Two Roads again and they had a selection and this is one of the things on tap, I don't believe I would get it. It's not that it's bad. It's just that it's not my speed and it burns the back of my throat. <laughs> you can say you don't like it. It's okay. I'm going to drink it's as much of this as I can until I'm just giving it to you. So <laughs> get ready. It's got some good lacing though. It's a, it's, it's, listen, if you're an experimental drinker, uh, it's great. Oh, it's, it's hot. If this isn't your jam, they do have plenty of other beers at Two Roads. Um, their year-rounders include... Boy, do they. Yes. Uh, the year-rounders include the ones we mentioned, also their workers' comp farmhouse ale, their old factory pills, their cruise control lager. They have a Two Juicy, which is really popular around here, double unfiltered hazy IPA. They got their Espressway cold brew. Um, so they got some seasonal options. They have um, some sours and stuff, uh, and the Road Less Traveled series, which one of their seasonals. One of uh, you mentioned your favorite beer, beer, so I'm going to talk about my favorite beer very quickly. Go one of their it. seasonal options, as you all should know by now, the Road's Mary's Baby, a rum barrel aged pumpkin ale that is. Just so magnificent. Magnif- it's I've been, magnificent. I've been drinking. It's magnificent. 6.8% is absolutely incredible. It only comes out during like the fall. So I'm going to have to wait a little bit longer. But it's really great and they have really awesome features anyway. They going. also have a Rosemary's Other Baby. Yes, they do, which, which I haven't is, tried yet, but I'm very interested in trying. I'm more interested in this because it's 9.7% ABV and it's a uh, it's a Rosemary's Baby made with Caribbean rum barrels. Uh, aged the beer. So pumped. And then, um, you know, it kind of reminds me of that Avery Rumkin. Yeah. Which we were big which fans of. we were of, drunk I off of. I think. I don't remember that we, night. We, yeah, we don't remember that night. Another beer, real quick, that I tried the other night when we were at Two Roads. Uh, the Kentucky Lightning Sour Mash Bourbon Ale. Um, really, really awesome. It might be one of my new favorite. Like, this beer, I loved it so much that I got it to go. Like, I had to get it. Um, an 8.5%. Um, Two Roads have conjured up the moonshine-inspired bourbon-like ale uh, aged in real bourbon barrels from a famous Kentucky distillery. This unique concoction includes notes of whiskey, oak, and vanilla. Go try it, Kentucky Lightning. Uh, we have like eh, like five minutes okay. to do this. All right, let's do this. Here we go. Uh, and it's, it's nothing big, but, you know, we, we got to uh, round things out with a fun topic and you know, we figured why not celebrate the anniversary of one of our favorite movies of literally all time. Wedding Crashers! Bang! <laughs> Exclamation point! That's right. Wedding Crashers is almost 15 years old. I believe it is 15 years old. Uh, as the R-rated comedy classic turns 15, director David Dopkin looks back on some of the outrageous debauchery. So, this movie's great. If you haven't seen it... What's wrong with you? We're upset. Um, but one of the things we wanted to mention was, one, how much we love the movie. Two, how funny it is. But three, how it all kind of came together. You know, they... they Like, we're talking to Vince Vaughn about it, and they said, is this a rom-com? And he was like, no. <coughs> no, it's not a rom-com. It's about two 35-year-olds getting the rocks off when they're crashing weddings. Um, but what was really cool for me was the casting of Will Ferrell as Chaz, the guy who crashes funerals. One of the greatest cameos of all time. Absolutely. Walking down the stairs of his mother's apartment in a kimono <laughs> and nunchucks and just Mother going... Mother meatloaf! <laughs> <laughs> the classic, classic line. But he walks down, he looks at Owen Wilson's character. What the fuck do you want? <laughs> and he's like, Chaz? Um... <laughs> One of one of the questions they had to ask themselves in the beginning was, is this really going to work? Which I find really interesting because you don't really think of that. And I guess they shot all of Will Ferrell's scenes in one day. I I mean, I buy it. Uh, he He's only in, like, what, two scenes? More or less. And then at the very end. Yeah, 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 two scenes. 
I mean, Where he's crying, and then he looks at someone and goes, "Hey." Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's incredible. It's just like literally. I mean, this movie. Like, we're not gonna sit here and just bother you about it. Like, you can. I <laughs> you get it. It may not this. be everybody's cup of tea, but like, we quote this movie every day, almost. <laughs> it's our, It's pretty much our language. Let's open a maple syrup conglomerate. <laughs> it's it's just so funny. Is she still in the house? It's you the, sailor you. <laughs> You motorboat and son of a bitch. See, we could do this all night. We won't, but we could. But that movie is 15 years old, and I think we should go watch that right now while Gabe hawks back the rest of this pepper beer he hates but won't say. I don't like it. I'm sorry. (laughs) I love it. I don't hate it. It's just I don't like it to hurt, and it hurts. And I sound like a bitch, but I don't care. I love hot sauce. Follow the HO Podcast on Instagram, Twitter, on Facebook. You can find us on on YouTube, all of those things. And uh, please rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. It helps the show. It helps us make the show better for you. Five Uh, stars or nothing. We love you guys. Thank you so much for joining in. Check out round 30 next Thursday. Area 2. And remember, try and take the the road less traveled.